Gallup's Global Wellbeing Index. We get reactions from the countries with the highest well-being. I'm Yasmin Vesugian, and this is the Gallup World Poll. Of the more than the 130 countries Gallup polled, the countries with the highest well-being were New Zealand and Denmark, who tied with a .79 index. When I think of New Zealand, I think that we're very lucky in New Zealand and that we live in a beautiful environment. And in addition to that, I think we're also lucky in that New Zealanders generally, their financial security, um, their health, uh, the, the social policies of New Zealand all support people being able to get on with life without having to worry perhaps the way they do in some countries um, about you know something awful happening to them. In most cases of dire poverty, self-reported measures of well-being drop dramatically. But in Denmark that's not the case. It stays constant even for people who make below 2,000 euros yearly. I think we have a long tradition of, of having a high level of, of social security. So even if you have a very low income, you, you can have a decent housing, you can have, your kids can have an education, you can go to the top hospitals in Denmark and you can still be treated. So even if you have a low income, there is a number of services that the society provides for you. Canada came in third with 0.78, followed by Australia and Venezuela at 0.77. Norway, Ireland, Brazil, and the United States all were at 0.76, and Switzerland, Finland, and Sweden scored 0.75. All of these countries have GDP per capita greater than $26,200, except for Brazil at 8,800 and Venezuela at 7,200. It has to do with the general attitude towards life. People there have a propensity to be very optimistic about their future, regardless of the economic situation, of the particular circumstances they face. Gallup's Global Wellbeing Index is a measure of subjective well-being around the world. Many economists and policymakers believe that well-being helps explain and predict a country's economic and social progress. Six questions were used to measure a country's well-being, all incorporating self-perceived life satisfaction, experience, optimism, and purpose. Check back for part two when we look at the countries who have the lowest well-being. I'm Yasmin Vesugin, and join us again to hear more voices from around the world.